Okay, um, so we're going to start talking about trigonometry. And um, about this time last year in geometry, you were kind of learning the same thing. So this should feel somewhat familiar. We, um, I think in geometry, you only talked about sine, cosine, and tangent. And um, there are also three other trig ratios that we're going to talk about in Algebra 2. All right, so before we do, we're going to review some things that you learned last year and review some things that you've learned this year. So first, um, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. And if you remember anything from geometry, you probably remember the Pythagorean theorem. And so you use um, the Pythagorean theorem to, there's a typo, so to find the side length of a right triangle. All right, so if you know two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third side by um, using the Pythagorean theorem. And do you guys remember what it is? It uses A, B, and C. Surely somebody. Okay, well, it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Where A and B are the legs, of the right triangle, which are the legs are going to touch the right angle. And C is going to be the hypotenuse. So C has to be the side opposite of the right angle. So C, the hypotenuse is by itself. The other two are on the other side. All right, so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side on a couple of triangles. And so what I do when I'm doing these problems is I just find the hypotenuse. So if you're looking at this triangle number one, which side is the hypotenuse? X. And then I'll just, I'm going to make it colored so I'll remember. All right, so whenever I'm doing the Pythagorean theorem, X has to be by itself. So it's going to be 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to X squared. All right, and then you can do 4 squared plus 8 squared in your calculator if you want to. Right, and so 80 is what x squared is. How do we find what x is? Take the square root. Now, when we learned about taking square roots to solve equations back, I don't know when it was, like unit 6 or something, or 4, I don't know. Um, we ought to always do the positive and negative square roots, but can a side of a triangle be a negative it can't. So on these, we're only going to take the positive square root. Now we're not done with this one because there is a perfect square. There's actually two perfect squares that divide evenly into 80. And so I'm just going to write down a few perfect squares. Okay. It keeps going, obviously. Um, but we don't want to start at the beginning of this list because 4 does divide evenly into 80, but it's not the largest square. So we want to find the largest number in this list that's going to go evenly into 80. Do you guys know? It's going to be 16. 80 is 16 times 5, so we can break it down to the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. And then when we learned this before, I told you that um, the perfect square can break out of the radical prison because um, it's perfect. So then it's going to be the square root of 16 is just 4, and the 5 stays underneath. All right, so that's what x is. 
right? So Pythagorean theorem is a review from geometry. Simplifying the radical and solving that is a review from algebra two. All right, let's do another one. Let's look at number two. All right, so on these, like these triangles get like rotated around. So you want to find the hypotenuse. And so the hypotenuse is going to be opposite of the right angle. So this is going to be the hypotenuse. So it's going to be by itself on the equation. So this one is going to be x squared plus 22 squared equals 24 squared. Right. This one is slightly different. Um, we're going to go ahead and square 22. You can do that in the calculator. And square 24. All right. What would you guys do now to solve this for x? Oh, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, so we want to solve this for x, so we're going to subtract that 484. And we will get 92. And then just like the last problem, we're going to go ahead and take the square root. Great, and then we're going to look at the list again and see if there's a square that goes evenly into 92. And there is. It's a small one. It's just going to be 4 this time. 4 times 23. All right. And then the square root of 4 is just regular 2. And then that 23 is going to stay under the square root. Now let's just talk about these trig functions. Um, a trigonometric ratio compares two sides of a right triangle and the Greek letter theta, which looks like, it's like a O with a slash through it, is used to represent the measure of an acute angle in a right triangle. So this is theta. Right? And then to do trig ratios, you use the side opposite of theta, which is going to be across the triangle. We're going to use the side adjacent to theta, which is going to touch the theta. And you use the hypotenuse, which we already talked about, it goes across from the right angle. And you guys learned an acronym in geometry for finding the sine, cosine, and tangent. Do you guys remember it? I feel like nobody's talking to me today. I don't know. All right, it's Sokotoa, and it's possible your geometry teachers wrote Sokotoa this way. I don't know. There's some geometry teacher that I've seen do that. Have you guys seen it written that way before? Okay. Oh, no, I'm almost What? I'm doing geometry. I, yeah, I did terrible in geometry. I would have failed, but then I found this kid that was really smart <laughs> All right, well, they put in some trigonometry standards in Algebra 2, so this is geometry and Algebra 2 stuff that we're doing today. Bless you. Okay, so the S in Sokotoa stands for the sign. What do you guys think the O stands for? Opposite, and H is hypotenuse. So whenever we're finding the sign of an angle... We're going to have a fraction where we're just going to write the opposite over the hypotenuse. And they'll just be side lengths. So it's going to be the length of the opposite over the length of the hypotenuse. All right. And then the ka part of Sokotoa, the C stands for cosine, A stands for adjacent, and H again stands for hypotenuse. So the cosine of an angle is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. All right, and then tangent 
is the toa part. And O still means opposite. And A still means adjacent. All right, so those were the three that you learned about in geometry. But like I said, there are three more, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. And they're called the reciprocal functions because they're the reciprocals of the ones we just talked about. So if we want to find the cosecant, we just do the reciprocal of the sine, which means we would do the hypotenuse <laughs> over the opposite. The secant is a reciprocal of the cosine, so it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And then the cotangent is reciprocal of the tangent, so it's the adjacent over the opposite. We have to wrap them out, right? Can we put like HO? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever will help you remember it. It's fine. Okay, so on our examples, we are first going to have to find a missing side length. So we'll do the Pythagorean theorem first, and then we're just going to do the trig ratio. Some of these are definitely easier than others. So this first one is not one that's too terrible. So... Um, when we go to find the missing side length, this is our right angle. So the missing side is actually the hypotenuse. So this is going to be 16 squared plus 30 squared equals C squared. The hypotenuse always is by itself. Okay. Then if you type um, 16 squared plus 30 squared, you get 1,156. And then just like before, we're going to take the square root. Now, 1,156 is a pretty big number. You may not know that it's a perfect square, but it is. So when you do, you can just do the square root in the calculator, and the square root of that is just 34. So I would go ahead and just label that missing side length with 34. And then until you guys are like really, really good at doing trigonometry, I would probably label my sides. So here is theta, and theta moves from problem to problem, but it's here now. So the side opposite of theta is going to be this 16. So I would go over beside 16, and I would just say OPP. The adjacent side is going to be the side touching it. That's not the hypotenuse, so that's going to be 30. And then we already said 34 was the hypotenuse. How do you determine the adjacent hypotenuse? Okay, so hypotenuse is going to be always opposite of the right angle. And then opposite is going to be, like if you go across the triangle from theta, that's going to be opposite. And adjacent is going to touch theta. So the adjacent is going to touch the side well, that both opposite and adjacent touch the 90 degree angle, but adjacent touches the one that's labeled with theta. But it's not touching it. It is touching it. Where? This is theta right here. It's touching it. So it's the same gap, the same size gap between the hypotenuse and the adjacent. Okay, the theta is going to touch the hypotenuse and going to touch adjacent. This is, theta is the angle, 100%. I don't know how to say that differently. Theta is what you're finding the sine, cosine, tangent of. So we look at theta and decide which is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And then we go to do sine. We don't need a very long fraction bar because it's just going to be a number over a number. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. In this triangle, opposite is 16, 
hypotenuse is 34. That's going to be the sine of theta. Now, if this fraction will simplify, we definitely want to do that. So when I simplify that fraction, it's going to reduce down to 8 over 17. All right, and then the cut part of Sokotoa is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 30, the hypotenuse is 34, right? And then you can let your calculator reduce this for you. You just do alpha y equals, type them in like a fraction, and that's going to reduce to 15 over 17. And then tangent is the toa part of Sokotoa, which is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. And again, it's going to reduce down to 8 over 15. All right. And then once we get those three, doing the next three, the reciprocal ones, we just flip them over. So cosecant, we flip over the sine secant we flip over the cosine and cotangent we flip over the tangent now the next one is going to be slightly more difficult because we are going to have a square root this one everything was just like a perfect number a lot of these have square roots as side lengths all right, so for number four, um, theta has moved to a different place. So theta is at the top. Seven is going to be the hypotenuse. I'm going to go ahead and call it hypotenuse. Thirteen is going to be the adjacent. And we're going to have to find what the opposite is. So we're going to do the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be a squared plus the square root of 13 squared equals 7 squared. Do you guys know what the square root of 13 squared is? All right, we can type it in. It's just regular 13. So the square just makes the square root go away. And 7 squared is 49. Great. And this one we have an extra step. We'll have to subtract that 13 first. And then find the square root. So A is going to be 6. And so if it was me, I'd go ahead and label that on my triangle. Okay, so I know that because of what we wrote before, to find the sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I already said my opposite was 6. And my hypotenuse was 7, so that's it. Cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. Now, I'm not sure what happened in geometry whenever you had a radical on the denominator or square root on the bottom, um, but we don't like to leave our answers like that. So do you guys know what to do with that square root of 13? It's okay. We're just gonna multiply the top and bottom by it. So in the numerator, I can't multiply the 6 and the 13 because the 6 is on the outside, the 13 is on the inside, so that's 6 square root of 13. And multiplying the square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is the same as squaring it. So that's just going to be regular 13.
All right. And then now I'm going to do my reciprocals. Sometimes the reciprocals aren't as easy as they were on the first step uh, or number three. So this one, the cosecant is easy. The secant is going to be a little bit of extra work. Because we have the same issue we just had, where we're going to need to multiply. So you only do it if, uh, if it's on the bottom. Exactly. Now, when we go to do cotangent, we're going to be smart about which ones we flip. So I'm not going to take my final answer and flip it. I could. It, it would still, we'd have a lot of work to do, but it would still work out. But if I take this one, the one, sorry, if I took the one we had originally and flip it, then that moves that square root to the top, which is exactly where we want it. And then just a six on the bottom. So flip this one. Okay, the back we're going to do tomorrow, but I'm going to give you your homework sheet. We're going to do one more example together on the homework. We're going to do number three together. Number three just simplifies in a way that's a little more difficult than any of the other examples we did. So I just want to do it with you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and label the opposite, the hypotenuse, and the adjacent. So if theta is here, opposite is going to be this one, the one where one is. Five is going to be the hypotenuse. And whatever we find is going to be the adjacent. All right, so I'm going to start off with the Pythagorean theorem. Um, it's going to be a squared plus 1 squared equals 5 squared. So just make sure the hypotenuse is by itself when you set it up. And then we're just going to solve this for a. So we end up with the a squared is 24, and then we do have to break it down. All right, and then because of the way that one simplified, it just makes it a little more challenging as we go through. Okay, so to do the sign, we're going to do the opposite over the hypotenuse. So 1 over 5. For cosine, we're going to do the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then for tangent, we're going to do the opposite over the adjacent. And then this is where it gets kind of weird. So I can't have that square root of 6 in the denominator, so I'm just going to multiply by it. So in that denominator, if you want to just type that 2 times square root of 6 times square root of 6 in the calculator, you can. It's just 12. Or I hope at some point you're going to realize square root of 6 times square root of 6 is just regular 6. And then 6 times 2 is 12. All right. And then let's just flip these things over. 
So that's going to be 5. This one's going to have a little work to do. Because when I flip it, that square root goes to the bottom. So we'll do the same thing we just did. Oh, I wrote something wrong. Hold on. Thank you. All right, and so that denominator is just what I just typed in the calculator, so it's still going to be 12. And then when I go to do cotangent, I'm going to flip this one over, not the final answer. So it would be 2 squared to 6 over 1, or just 2 squared to 6. Because 2 times square root of 6 times square root of 6 is 12. That's just regular 6. All right, any other questions? Okay, so today I just want you guys to work on the front of this, and then tomorrow we'll do the back of the notes and the back of the worksheet.